Hello, this is Jorge Amir. We're here on day five of Principal Photography of Altered Perceptions with a very special actor, one of my favorites, Lance Guest. Lance, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So Lam Lance is, to me, iconic because he represents a piece of the 80s of a film that I really, truly love called The Last... Last Starfighter? Starfighter. <laughs> Lance, tell us a little bit about um, that film and how it was in the 80s. This film has, has literally persevered throughout time for 40 years. It shows every year here in Los Angeles. I go to the screening, I, and there's a Q&A, and I always, I always love hearing about this movie. This movie was also the beginning of a lot of a whole industry of special effects. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that experience of making the last Starfighter, and and uh, and and why do you think forty years later is still relevant? I, I don't know, because when it was it was it was released originally, it was it was like shelved almost immediately. It was like that didn't make money. Three weeks, boom, gone. And especially in Hollywood, but in but in across the country, it it stayed around for a little a little longer, and then that the uh, advent of, of home video and stuff sort of made it so that, like, if you owned this, you could watch it every day after school. And I've, I've met several people that have, that have said that when they were, whatever, 10 years old and they're making forts, you know, in their, in their, in their living room and stuff. But, um, I, I, you know, I don't know. I just, I, you know, I loved all the people that, that were involved in it, all the, the actors and the writer and the director and everybody. And the, um, you know, we, we, it was a very, basically an experimental film because we had to depend on the, uh, special effects that we weren't sure what they were going to look like, so um, they were they were very. Uh, it was a brand new industry, brand new technology. We were really the first CGI movie that used CGI for, like Tron used the CGI for the environment, but we used the CGI to replace model explosions and you know ships flying through the air and stuff like that. So. It was CGI for that purpose, um, and it was the first time, and it took a really long time. It took I think, something like 45 minutes of frame or something to make these things, or maybe it was a second of film, but it, was, it took a really long time, and uh, we just sort of went on faith, and uh, it, was a, it was a nice story, and we had, like I said, good actors and some kind of offbeat comedy, and you know, there was a, there was a, there was a good vibe. I noticed a lot of these films that origin that are now classics. When they originally came out, they didn't do well. A yeah. lot of films have that same story, but then over time, and as audience discovered them, they really started to to generate a following, and and then that's how they become classics. And others become cult classics. When you do a film like this, do you get some kind of a vibe or something that no one else get at the time? I guess whenever you first signed up, that you might be doing something special that might transcend time. Does that? Does that usually happen, or, or you just go with the moment, thinking, you know, uh, okay, this came in, so I'm just going to do it? Um, I, you know, I don't really remember. I, I, we just tried to make it. What I liked about this, and I say this often, is that it reminds me of. Um, I had a lot of friends who were about my age who were sort of experimenting in science fiction comedy. So when you got this script, and you read it. What's, what was your first impression of it? Uh, well, it was it was uh, it was kind of a, a, a lot of things. It was a, it was a lot of it was adventure. It was science fiction. It was there was there's some sort of futuristic aspects to it. There's um, there are uh, political aspects to it, um, and uh, I don't know. I, I like this kind of. I've always liked scientific sort of nerdy characters like the guy that I'm playing, you know. I like that that people are interested in science and they're interested in, you know, inquiry, scientific inquiry and knowledge. Great. So uh, in closing, uh, could you give a shout out to our audience and also how can people find you on social media? I don't have social media. <laughs> what a smart man. He does not have social media. I have a Facebook page, but they're like, you know, my friends from college and of high course. school. And so I'm not so a we'll skip social that part. media guy. <laughs> um, my friends are my friends. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so a shout out to our people watching you out there. People who actually loved the films from the 80s, who loved your film The Last Starfighter, who loved your film Jaws the Revenge. Jaws the Revenge! Yes, <laughs> yes, we remember those films, you know, yes. those are those were iconic films from the 80s that we still watch every year because the Cinematheque's, you know, they program them, yeah. so they've become classics. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great organization. Um, yeah, I got certainly got a lot of mileage out of these these movies. <laughs> we didn't think it was, we didn't think they would they would uh, take off. To and conventions, there are actually conventions that are surrounding these movies that you could you still I guess go so, to, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, there are there are some. Well, what do you think keeps this, this? This is a whole industry by itself. What keeps people dressing up like your characters? <laughs> I've seen it. I, I've never seen myself dressed up. Uh, I've, I've seen never. them dressed up like the you and the character of um, that's uh, in your in the film. Um, Usually it's it's Ghostbusters. Usually pe they're people's favorite outs out outfit of the Ghostbusters. That's that too. Um, my, I, I don't know. I've never seen anybody dressed in anybody in my film except oh, Hollow. I was in a Halloween movie. I was in first movie I ever made was a Halloween two, and it was. Um, I see people that you know they they got my jacket and everything. <laughs> um, I don't I don't know. I I I I. I Do you think it's no is it nostalgia? You think or. I mean, because these conventions are big. Because movies mean, have been around for a long time, yeah. you know, and there there wasn't that uh, sort of thing. I think it started with you know Star Trek conventions and sci-fi conventions and comic book conventions, and and as the movies became more like those, uh, you know, comic books and things like that, the crossover happened. You know, you don't you didn't have people you know lining up for the conversation, for example, or you didn't have people going to conventions for these you know Hal Ashby movies or. All those great movies of the 70s. Um, it, as the movies became more sort of um, pop culture oriented or you know comic book like, more fun that way. I mean, Star Wars obviously was the first one to do that. Um, people became more, more uh, sort of genre, genre crazy. Yes, they have. I'm one of those. Thank you, <laughs> Lance, so much. This is Jorge Amir from Principal Photography of Altered Perceptions. Please support independent films. Support our film when it comes out. Support Lance, who is also part of our beautiful cast and large constellation of stars that we have in this independent film. <laughs> and we look forward to you guys following us. And also stay tuned for more stars that we're going to be interviewing as part of our uh, behind the scenes uh, altered perceptions principle photography special thank you <laughs>